Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Quoco. Well, I didn't expect that, <laughs> but I like it. All right, we're going to do something different this morning. Uh, yeah, I. you know what I'm excited about? And, you know, thank God. And, Sean, I, I told you this this morning. It is so amazingly incredible, and I want to give a big shout-out to my team. Uh, not only do we have... The custom, whether you're listening to us on the iOS or Android app on the website, we've got that messenger. I'm going to tell you that thing is so awesome to be able to get these direct messages, to be able to, you know, hear the love and support, you know, people asking questions, requesting shout outs. And, uh, you know, not only are you able to message us from there, but, you know, Power 98.5, we do have a call-in line. Um, I know I haven't really shared it before. I wanted my team and everyone to get into a position to where, you know, we're, we're in a place to where my team is ready for all of these updates and upgrades. And, you know, I was, you know, just sharing, as you guys all know, uh, I've got an incredible guest for today, uh, the one, the only, David Johnston. And, you know, he's got a background in media and broadcasting. And it's like, I don't, I don't mean to get frustrated, but it's like when you know something works and it works and it's simple, you just want things to be, <laughs> be left alone. But at the same time, I sit back and I go through my little bit of frustrations of, all right, I got to learn this. I got to learn that. I've got to click this. I've got to click that because it's a whole new system we're on. I'm very, very grateful. I want to thank my entire team in Manchester um, and my team in New York. I want to thank you guys for all the upgrades, everything that you're doing. Um, and even all the help and a go through because, you know, I, I, I like to be creative, um, I'm not wanting to be, uh, you know, having to figure out all of these little ins and outs. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things I, <laughs> I had to learn in the last couple months and all this new jargon, but it's all good. I love it. I appreciate it. And thank you. And once again, to bring us back to the conversation, we do have what we are calling conversations. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, send us your messages. I'm going to click on over right now to power 98.5. Christina uh, Richardson, not my assistant, Christina Montgomery. Christina Richardson, thank you so much for the love and support. And uh, if anyone has any questions, whether it's, you know, today or tomorrow or whatever it may be, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the call in number is 646 969 3365. All right, that's my New York number. That is the office number for Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Uh, I didn't want to drop the, the beans too early on that, that we do have a call in line. You can call me anytime it goes to me. It goes, you know, the information will go to my team, but we do, we are going to, you know, offer more support and then also for our listeners and for our guests, you know, to be able to get people on. That's the biggest thing that we were getting prepared for. I'm going to just drop the, drop the dime on this is getting ready for live call-ins. You know, that's a lot. It takes a lot. There's a lot that has to go through with uh, taking live call-ins. And that's why I didn't want to give anyone permission before. But I'm really excited to let you know that as of today, we have launched live call-ins. You can call the studio at 646-969-3365. Uh, happy that the weather, even though it's what, 100, what are we looking at today? 104. It's better than when we were at 113 
last week and early this week, my air conditioning kept running and running and running. It could not cool down. Thank God we did not hit 124. This time last year, we were about 121, 124 in June, July. And so I'm happy that things are changing and <laughs> we're on, we, like we hit the 100, 102, 103 mark, but uh, that's good enough for me. Oh, I, I'm going right into it today. I'm not going to be, yeah, there's there's nothing else that I really want to get into. I like to change things up from time to time and not stay, you know, consistently regimented on having any sort of format, as you guys know. Uh, people like things different. I like things different. We've got where I've had and am having an absolute pleasure of getting to know uh, Team USA professional swimmer, Mr. David Johnston. Uh, 21 years old. He grew up in Dallas, Texas, graduated high school in 2020. He graduated in three years from the University of Texas at Austin with a degree in communication and leadership business minor. He did not wait. <laughs> He did not wait. He did like, I, I was done with high school when I was 16. Like I, and when I talk to him, I feel like I'm talking to my younger self. And, uh, uh, you know, six foot two, you know, great, great young guy growing into being a legendary champion. I asked him, you know, does he see himself? Does he believe he's going to be in the same category as a Michael Phelps and a Caleb Dressel? You know, I'll let him answer that if he wants to live, but I believe he will be. The 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 fact of him and the Gen Z generation, my goodness, you guys are fantastic. I love the rebellion. I love the I respect the independence. I respect the fact that you you will have a voice. You're not gonna allow other people to control it. You know, the independence is is really really admirable. I appreciate it. And the maturity, if you got to remember, people have a lot of judgment about people when they were young. You know, we were all young at one time, but I, I think the Gen Z generation is one of the best and I'm excited for them and what they have to, uh, what they're bringing to us in our world. Uh, David also is a 2023 NCAA runner up in a 500 yard freestyle 2021 NCAA team national champion, eight-time individual All-American in the NCAA. And his goal is to qualify for the 2024 Olympic team and win a medal. I want to add on, on to that, a gold medal. I believe he can do it. David, welcome to the show. Thank you a lot, Stephen. I appreciate that, that high praise. And I'm excited to catch up with you today. And it's going to be a good one. It is. It already is. And big shout out to Marcos Papadatos. Whether you're listening to this now, Marcos, or uh, going to be listening to it later, uh, I know uh, he's he's going to want to show additional support and probably go ahead and do another write up. The list goes on and on, David. It's it's incredible for how young you are, yet it feels and looks and where we have the facts is uh, it, it's like you've accomplished ten years in a year or two right for sure i was certainly a late bloomer and um you know i had to wait until i was probably 17 or 18 by the time i started getting real um college offers and so i think kind of being a late bloomer was what has motivated me to achieve some of those things and i really appreciate your high praise and um i'm just looking forward to being in japan at worlds um with team usa i want to go faster than I did at the U.S. trials. It was a great moment to be able to win that race. And obviously, I've enjoyed celebrating that with my family. And now it's time to, you know, get back to work and go faster. So there you go. Your hobbies include ping pong. I haven't played that, I believe, in like 20, oh, 20 if not more years. And I'm not exaggerating. Speed typing. Speed typing. Play, uh -huh. that, that's a game? Oh, um, I just practice typing fast on typeracer.com and um, I've got my speed up closer to the 150 word per minute mark, but it's just kind of a secret skill of mine I put on my bio. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. You use an app for this. Right. R Certainly. Oh, my. Wow. And then riding roller coasters. What? Right. Uh, when I was younger, I'd travel all around the country just to ride different roller coasters. I've always been a big fan of seeking high thrill rides. I'm a really competitive person. And now I like swimming in the big meets. So that those are the moments that I live for those big races now. I like it. The speed typing, riding roller coasters and ping pong. What that what that tells me is that uh, you're dedicated, you're committed. When you're in it, you're in it to win it. Uh, however that may be, like even if it's just, you know, uh, casual uh, competition or good competition, I, I see that this is about relationship building. Uh, you know, the riding roller coasters is to where it, it tells me that you believe it's, it's about having a healthy balance and, and taking time for yourself and uh, enjoying life and not saying that loosely. Uh, but when I think about ping pong, you being a professional swimmer, speed typing, that's, that's sheer dedication. That's, you, you've got to put everything into that when we think of focus. And I like how you, you expand uh, in a widescreen form of your focus and, and, you know, want to have fun and, and live your life. And I, I appreciate that for you. Right. Thank you. Those are certainly some of my hobbies and, uh, swimming. Obviously I'm very competitive with that, but realize that you need to step away from that and have fun in life sometimes. And, um, that's why I have those hobbies to, to get my mind off the pool and recharge me to, come into that next practice with a, with a lot of motivation. And um, so I really enjoy those things. I want you to go ahead and tell us a little bit more, David. Uh, you expressed that you set lofty goals and you have a bulletin board or you're a bulletin board type of guy. Paint us a picture. What does that look like? Right. Um, so a lot of times there'll be a certain goal that pops in my mind. I'll immediately write it down, put it on my wall in my room, see that every day and try to go chase it. Um, or there's somebody I want to beat. Um, so I'll put a photo of them in my room and that's what motivates me. Or maybe a quote someone said, um, even if they meant it nonchalantly, um, there could be something somebody said that really motivated me and I'll go put it in my room and try to try to prove them wrong or prove them right so there's lots of things that fuel me and i'm a bulletin board type of guy and fueled by a lot of motivation and mental visualization in my swimming i like to listen to a lot of music and when i do that i can kind of see myself um, winning a race or a certain celebration when the beat drops or something like that and i think all those moments uh visualizing myself uh, being able to win a big race gives me the confidence in training and the confidence that I can do it. And I think um, when I won that big race this week at the Nationals, that was the first time I've won uh, a big final. I've been in a lot of NCAA finals, Olympic trials finals, but never won. And so being able to finally get that victory um, felt great. But had I not seen it in my head many times, I wouldn't have been able to do it. When we think about music and motivation – this is something I don't know about you, and I'm looking forward to finding out what your answer is going to be. What sort of music does motivate you and move you? Oh, good question. I, I like electronic dance music, um, hip-hop music, just anything that has a, has a good beat that I can then um, envision in my head, um, like a race-type situation where the beat drops and then I can see myself winning. I Actually, I think where a lot of this comes from is um, I used to run a lot of social media uh, Instagram accounts for my favorite basketball player, Steph Curry. And I made a lot of videos of him playing basketball and uh, just, just to music. And I think once I started to see those videos online and start to make them myself, that kind of made me also want to be a great athlete. And I started envisioning myself in those videos trying to achieve something. So I actually, I think I, that's kind of where it comes from with me, but you know, not, not every time I listen to music, I'm thinking about swimming, but you know, when I'm in the mood for it, um, it certainly comes naturally to me. And I think just thinking about, um, being able to achieve a goal of mine so much is what, and I can see it. That's kind of what gives me the confidence to go do it. You know, I, <laughs> what's incredible about you is, you're, when they say 
it's more than what meets the eye. You are that because there are certain key things about you I would never have thought. And one being that Breaking Bad is is your favorite television show. I have to ask why and what is it about the show? Well, I like comedy and I like drama. And I think that that show was a lot of fun. It's one of the only shows I've watched in entirety. But I just thought it was it was really fun. Um, I like the drama in it. And obviously, Vince Gilligan is an amazing um, writer. So um, it, it's my favorite TV show. I just think there's a lot of, a lot of good drama, a lot of storyline in there. And really enjoyed watching that. There's one show I would have to say to you that I assumed that I was not going to like it. And I'm going to tell you, I am such a huge ally of this show now. I finished it uh, within four days, I believe. Ted Lasso. Have oh, you, really? Have you watched yeah. it? I, I started watching it. I haven't finished it, but I've been meaning to. Yeah, it's, that, that's also a great show. It's it's really funny. Yeah. It, it, and it, it just, it's got that funny drama that you were talking about, and that came to me, and I'm like, yeah, there's, uh, I think... I think that this show could really, um, I don't know, inspire you or uplift you. I mean, it just has everything, you know, when we think about competition and, uh, you know, visualization and uh, community outreach and relationship building and relationships dissolving and then how they come back into play again and where you end up figuring out why people and how people play a certain role and importance in our life. So I really, uh, I encourage you to finish it. Right. I'd love to. Thanks a lot for the suggestion. And I'm glad that we both enjoyed Ted Lasso so far. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, is. It literally, fun. like when I say it's the number one show of 2023 for me, it's Ted Lasso. Right. Certainly awesome. I'll have to finish it for you and let you know what I think. Please. Uh, one yeah. of the bullet points uh, you sent over to us is I'm a, I'm big into the mental visualization component of sports, I often visualize myself achieving my goals, which gives me the confidence that I can achieve them. Do you want to extend that a little bit? Right, for sure. Um, you know, I just think kind of like I was saying with the music or just in life, you know, I, I, I have a hard time sitting still and I like to move around. So um, sometimes when I'm like pacing around the house, I'm like constantly thinking of, what it would be like to achieve a goal of mine. And I think once I can see that and I can see myself winning, even though it's not in reality, that's what gives me the confidence um, to go do it in the pool. And I think just having those high expectations and high goals for myself um, is what enables me to really go after practice and work hard because, um, you know, when I was in high school, I was blessed with a great mentor named Neil Walker who – he coached me in high school and he was, he was an Olympian in 2000 and 2004 and he swam for the university of Texas. And I was a late bloomer and um, was getting discouraged. And he was the one that really um, encouraged me and um, also helped me set really high goals. And so I'm just thankful for, for his guidance um, to be able to, I've been blessed with some amazing coaches throughout my career to help me be able to achieve these things. And, um, you know, I never wanted to stop at making a uh, team USA long course world. So now I'm already thinking about what I want to do next. And with the Olympic trials coming up next year, that's a great opportunity to continue to improve. There is a, uh not only in your improvement, but there's something that we've, we've got to make it clear, set the record straight. Uh, I'm curious. I I'm looking at, it, <laughs> I'm looking at it now. Um, and I appreciate uh, what you shared because we're going to go into about this trademark pose of yours. The uh, what do you what do you call it? Uh, shock the world. Shock the world pose, right? What went through your head? I mean, were you just standing up one day or sitting down or something, and something just said, "Shock the world"? Well, um, so. I'll tell you the origin of the phrase and the pose. So they were two different things, and now they've kind of been combined where that pose means shock the world. But my teammate, Victor Tremblay, my freshman year at UT, went out fast in one of his 500 races. And I was in the crowd with some of my teammates, and I was yelling, Victor Tremblay is going to shock the world in this race. 
And so I started saying that a lot. And we all kind of started saying that as a team because we thought it was funny. And so I would also do that shock the world pose behind my block uh, or behind the blocks before races um, because I felt like if I could do, I needed a ritual behind the block. And I kind of came up with that because it kind of looked like um, a, the Longhorns. Um, and so I started doing that before races. And um, at the NCAAs in 2021, um, our, our team kind of nicknamed that pose the Shock the World pose since we said that a lot. And so we got a photo of our team after we won the championship all doing that. And, um, you know, that was just a cool moment for us. And you'll continue to see more of that in the future. And I think it'll be good, uh, a good marketing tool and trademark them on. Yeah, it's uh, six, you're six two, and to imagine, because you've got long legs, long arms, there's no way <laughs> that can be missed. Right. Yeah, I've got a six five wingspan. So my dad is six five. I didn't quite get the height he had, but I have the arms that he had. So there you go. Would that have made a difference if you were your dad's height than where you're at now, honestly? I think I'm happy to be 6'2 with the progress. I mean, it's easier to fit into clothes, but honestly, you can't turn down being 6'5", and you'd probably be a little faster, but I'm grateful for, um, you know, the body that I do have, and it's working well for me. So there you go. When you talk about your wingspan, when I, the first person that comes to my mind, like anyone else, he's a signature in the sport, Michael Phelps, are you near him or are you close to where he's at in the wingspan? How can we differentiate or understand better? <laughs> I guess they'll have to get Phelps and, and I together to compare. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be one cool way to meet one of my idols growing up. Absolutely. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, you look larger than life it's in the videos and in the photos, and I can only imagine uh, what it would be like to stand next to you in person. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm kind of a, a skinny guy that's filled out a little bit more recently. But, um, yeah, I mean, Phelps was uh, inspired me a lot in the sport growing up. But one thing I would say that if I could be like him in any way it would be that I eat a lot like him. And, um, you know, I, I eat probably at least 6,000 calories a day. It's, it's kind of absurd what I eat every day. <laughs> and you're getting blood work. You get all that checked and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because that so, 6,000? Th <laughs> 6, yeah. yeah, at least, yeah, for sure. Oh, man. I, I eat a lot of food because, you know, I swim those long-distance races, and I've got to fuel the body to prepare for all that. Wow, 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 wow. I, I don't know if I ate that much in uh, – I don't know <laughs> when I was a right. kid, like – there's no way I ate that kind of. I was lucky if I got a thousand calories in a day when I was your age. Really? Yeah. Well, I think my parents were happy when I went to college that the food bill wasn't so high anymore. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Especially today's groceries. I mean, because what type of food do you eat? You're not vegetarian or anything, are you? No, I'm not. I make every morning for breakfast. I make at least ten, ten to twelve eggs and hash browns, and then. Um, fill that up with bacon and sausage. And then for lunch, I eat at Chipotle almost every day, um, you know, double chicken bowls. And because UT gives us some money at certain restaurants to eat each week. And um, then I eat a lot of peanut butter jellies, a lot of fruit, and a lot of chicken and pasta, carbs at night. So it's good stuff. You know, I'm, right now I'm at home before I go to Japan for Worlds for the week. And I'm really gr grateful to have my mother's cooking right now. So I'm really enjoying that. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yep. Well, I'll tell you this. I don't, as much as I eat, and not because I, I do enjoy food, uh, your body, as you know, changes, uh, and it's true, every seven years. And I find that I don't call myself vegan. I, I eat to my blood type. And um, I've... I'm not someone that can eat a lot of red meat often. I have to really be in a mood for it. But I tend to eat, you know, I enjoy fish. I enjoy vegan food. I enjoy vegan food really much. I have to add salt, pepper, and garlic from time to time to it. But right. I enjoy that a lot. But um, I'm sure with as much as I uh, eat, I'm sure, um, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, – I just, I'm, I'm processing what you're telling me because it's like, she's 
my doctor's not telling me I need to eat more, but I can just, <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, but the Chipotle, I can see that every day. Absolutely. Right. Well, it certainly almost makes eating almost more of a, something I have to do instead of something I enjoy to a degree, but you know, I can treat myself to good steaks. That's probably my favorite food. Um, you know, I like to eat a lot of vegetables and honestly, breakfast is probably my favorite meal. I mean, I try to cook myself breakfast every day, but if I can get treated every once in a while with, um, a pancake or something, that's always, that's always good. Absolutely. So. I've, uh, I've got to ask, is this, I found interesting that you're part of the athletes in action, Christian organization at the university of Texas. Uh, you're still doing this and can you explain a little bit more about that? Right. Yeah. It's a lot of fun being able to be a part of that. I just think there's a lot of athletes at UT um, that get caught up in defining themselves by their performance. And, you know, sport is stressful. And I think having that um, Christian ministry is obviously great for all of us to not only grow closer in our relationships with Christ, but also to um, be able to understand that we have an identity and purpose outside of um, just our swimming performances in this life. And um, it, it's brought me some great friends and, and just great theological discussions um, with other athletes from all around UT. And you get to meet a lot of people outside of just the swim team. You know, I've met a lot of different athletes through that and um, just been able to learn a lot um, about faith through that, through that ministry. And so I just think that's a very important part of my life. And it's a really, it's a cool ministry at UT to be able to find your purpose in life outside of just your performance, because that can weigh on a lot of people. Mm. Yeah. I appreciate you for that. And, um, and just how well reserved you are in a really good, good way, professional way. I appreciate that. I don't find that that often of just how very much in tune you are with yourself. I appreciate it. Maybe we'll have to get on the air more to chat. Be a good, be a good team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my parents who adopted me were both missionaries in every, my dad was in the military. My mom was a nurse, uh, but everywhere we lived, uh, they did missionary work even more after, uh, their retirement and, um, deacons in a church. I mean, every church where the Navy had placed us, um, or, you know, had us move, my parents, for some reason, I don't know, it just ended up to where people love their leadership. So I get it. Right, for sure. For sure. That's awesome. Uh, when you were a freshman in high school, uh, you quit swimming for six months and tried basketball and cross country. Did you love it? Or what did you find out about yourself? Right, yeah. So when I was a freshman in high school, I was only 5'2", and I was not an amazing swimmer, and I was kind of getting a little bit discouraged and burnt out about that. And so I think when I tried cross country and basketball, those things were a lot of fun to me. Um, but when I stopped swimming for a bit, I grew eight, you know, almost eight inches during that school year. So um, when I decided to come back to swimming, I was a different beast physically. And once I got back in shape, I started to see some rapid improvement, but more of the reason I'm really glad I took that break is just because mentally I was able to reset and really, um, be a lot more motivated moving forward um, because I kind of hit rock bottom. And I think um, having that experience has given me a lot of perspective um, now that I've gotten to the point I've gotten to of that there's a lot more to life than just swimming and just to be able to understand all different types of people because I was not always an elite athlete. And um, I always wanted to be, but um, I spent a lot of time um, feeling down and now it kind of just makes the getting to this point feel a lot sweeter. Um, but that was, that was a hard time for me, but I also think it's important in swimming to play other sports growing up, have life balance and try other things because it's a hard sport. It's, I think the, a beautiful sport, the most, the most fun sport in my opinion is swimming. That might be an unpopular opinion. I love it, but I think that you've got to try other sports growing up and have some balance because if you don't have balance, it, uh, it'll eat you alive. I agree. I totally yeah. agree. How perfectly expressed. Perfect. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, this name rings a bell uh, for some reason, but I've got to ask, and uh, you can enlighten us a little bit more on it, that you were coached in high school by Neil Walker, a former U.S. Olympian and world record holder. Are you still with Neil or are you with someone else? 
Well, right now I train at the University of Texas under the great Eddie Reese, who's won 15 national titles and is 81 years old. He's amazing. I'm glad I've gotten to swim for him the past three years. Um, but my high school coach was Neil Walker, who kind of um, taught me almost everything I knew and was a great mentor of mine and helped me ascend from kind of a nobody at 16 to at 18, being able to go to one of the one of the top colleges in the country and continue to develop because he swam for Eddie Reese, my coach right now. That's how long he's been around. Eddie, Eddie Reese has been around since 1978 coaching our college team. So isn't that unbelievable? He's been there for almost 45 years. And um, so it's just an amazing opportunity to be able to coach, be coached by some amazing people and coaches that I've really learned from. Yeah, I, I, uh, I truly believe, I said this before, and I'm going to say it again on record. I truly believe that you may not know everything just yet, and that happens so we can enjoy every single moment of our lives and really appreciate it without having to rush through life like we so do so often. I know I have. Um, but, exactly. but you've got gold. You've got gold, so much gold to look forward to. And even if you happen to get silver or bronze, I know you're going to appreciate it. I believe you're going to appreciate it. And more importantly, the fact that um, anytime Marcos interviews anyone, whether he acknowledges it or not verbally, uh, he's got a great, great sense, a uh, very exceptional way of with his intuition of seeing the greatness in someone else, whether or not they emulate it or live it or do whatever. I know with you, like I said to you yesterday, what was a real gift and, and pleasure and a incredible surprise when speaking with you. Um, it just all explains itself of why Marcos, uh, you know, brought us together and connected us and recommended, you know, this opportunity for us to meet and to, to do this interview. And there's going to be many more to come, but I'm, I'm going to honestly say that, you know, you've got a lot to look forward to. And I mean, a lot personally, emotionally, mentally, friendships, relationships, you know, business opportunities. I'm truly excited for you. Right. I appreciate it, Stephen. And just Marcos uh, was a lot of fun to get to know as well. So I'm really excited that we've become friends and um, I'm excited to grow our friendship and hope that when I get back from Japan, we can do more interviews in the future as uh, more opportunities present themselves. And, um, you know, I just wanted to say um, thanks a lot for your high praise. And I, I would say the same about you because I'd love to go into sports broadcasting or any type of broadcasting or radio following my career and you're certainly someone to look up to in that aspect. I appreciate, and in life. I appreciate yep. that. Thank you. Yep. In life. And then you said something else. I uh, accidentally cut you off. What was that in life? And Oh no, I was just saying that you're someone to look up to in, in radio and life for sure. And a good friend. So thank you. Yep. Uh, your favorite quote by Chester Bernard to try and yep. fall is at least to learn. To fail to try is to suffer the in... Oh, my goodness. Can you don't even tell me put a word in here? I'm <laughs> going to have a problem pronouncing uh, it. Um, here, I got, insatiable you, I got lo you. Insatiable loss. Yeah, but go ahead. You say it. <laughs> to try and fail is at least to learn, but to fail to try is to suffer the inestimable loss of never knowing what might have been. And that quote is something that my mother taught me when I was younger. And it, it basically just means that um, you, you never know how good you can get unless you try. And, um, you know, it's better to try and fail than to never try at all. And so that's kind of a quote that I lived by when I was 16 and I came back to swimming. There was no guarantees I would ever reach this level. Um, but obviously I always wanted to and I believed that I could. But I had to at least try um, and just give it my best effort. And so. Now that I've at least tried, I've gotten to this point, but I would have never known had I not had the courage when I was at rock bottom to go all in on swimming because, um, you know, you don't know how it's going to turn out, but you've got to put your best foot forward and try. And I think kind of that experience where I did reach rock bottom kind of taught me that, you know, I can't be afraid to fail. So that's kind of 
one of the mottos I live by, you know, I'm not afraid to lose. You know, I, I'll race anybody, even if even if I may lose, I'm not afraid to race them um, because I feel like I only have um, things to gain and there's more to life than just swimming and winning. But I feel like, um, you know, I'm not I'm not afraid to lose. And I think that mentality will really help me um, have more of a more longevity in my career. Oh, it most definitely will. And speak of our good friend, Marcos, he said, warm regards to David Johnston, uh, my favorite. That's awesome. Marcos is such a fun guy, and he's really, <laughs> really chill. So, uh, I, I enjoyed enjoyed that interview he did with me. Wrote it up very well. And he and obviously he found you, didn't he? He did. Yeah, yeah. he reached out to me, and I'm really glad that he did. So, it's a lot of great opportunities that presented themselves in the last week or so for me. Congratulations to your sister. She just got married on June 10th, uh, three days after my best friend for, what, 43 years, uh, uh, Rebecca. And uh, so June is a very special month for me, especially anything that's around her birthday. Uh, so, yeah, your sister got married. Were you in the wedding? What was going on? Right. Well, congrats to Rebecca. Um, yes, I was the groomsman in the wedding and it was a lot of fun to be able to attend her wedding and just kind of celebrate her. So I was in Dallas that week, um, just the whole week. And um, it was a lot of fun being home and just celebrating her. She had her honeymoon in Turks and Caicos and, um, you know, they had a ton of fun and I'm just so happy for them. I got to visit them uh, on Wednesday night and uh, get to see them move into their new place and uh, my sister's got a new job, which I'm really excited um, that she's working and her husband's in med school. So that was just an awesome moment for our family and uh, really happy to be able to celebrate her this month and um, this, the amazing marriage that they're going to have. I got to ask, and and what's her name? If Are you able to share it? Yeah, her name's Carolyn. Yep. Carolyn, Carolyn Neely. Now. Congratulations. Yep. <laughs> right. I appreciate it. Uh, what is the favorite, your favorite part about swimming, honestly? I would say the relationships I'm able to form with teammates because obviously I love competing and I love the fact that um, we know who won. It's not an opinion-based sport like, oh, who's better at basketball? I mean, we know who, who wins the race and I love that. But I would just say being able to form relationships with different teammates, there's a lot of amazing people in the swimming community um, that all want to help each other, have fun, and just being able to get to know so many people throughout my career has certainly been a pleasure, and USA Swimming is an amazing organization to be a part of. I I, uh, I agree with you. I really do. I'm finding that there are a lot of incredible athletes in the world of swimming and, and Team USA, and just you guys have, you know, like everyone else, a story, a life, experiences, you're learning, you're always going to learn. But most importantly, or more importantly, is that um, you've always got something to say. I And I like that, especially with you, is it just feels as though, um, you know, your future uh, with competitions and, you know, someone who enjoys ping pong and typing uh -huh. real fast right. and all these incredible you know, personal accolades and enjoyments. Um, it, it's going to be wonderful to see what your future interviews are going to be like, David, and what you're going to have to say and the questions that people are going to ask you. And, you know, I, I shared with you before, and I'll, I'll say it again, you've got that, you know, law enforcement, that government official, you've, you've got that authority, you've got that presence, that groundingness about you that, um, no matter what may be going on within you and your mind and your emotions, there is this peace that you exude, this sense of safety, this sense of feeling that I can sit down with you and not have to be in my head to think about anything. I can just sit and be present with you. Right. Well, thank you a lot for that praise. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited for what, you know, what the future inter intervals hold um, interview, sorry, you know, in future inter international competitions, you know, I want to represent the USA well, provide a positive image to Team USA, and I also want to help other athletes perform at their best. But one thing I'd love to do above all else is I just want to inspire other swimmers and 
make our sport more fun. Um, I had the pleasure of doing a swim clinic in Houston um, the day after Christmas in 2022, and I really enjoyed doing that, just giving back to the community and the kids because I was inspired by older swimmers growing up. And, you know, just any opportunity I have to uh, be um, a role model to anyone is something I will certainly cherish. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, and there's no mistake in that. You will. And you're going to leave a lasting impact. And with your signature pose, yeah, that's uh, that's going to continue to be a talk about. There you go. I'm glad that that silly kind of funny thing that was with our UT team has now hopefully turned into something worldwide. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is this is how we're going to be closing out uh, our day, you know, as David's out there with his signature trademark pose, shock the world. Uh, it's uh, it's it's quite uh, remarkable to just I- I'm looking at the the information and in some of the photos here that you sent David and seeing the group one with everyone shocking the pose, shocking the world in that pose. And it really goes to show and, and I'm going to say this, my first thought, what I first saw and what I first heard and what I first felt with David is you, rem- and I said this to you and I'm going to say it, you know, live is you remind me of Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, I saw the, uh, the post today about how uh, Elon Musk is not happy and you know, with uh, the threads, the new threads app and everything. And I was here um, looking at Mark Zuckerberg and looking at his photo and I kind of saw you it just reminded me because we're doing a live interview today. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm interviewing a team USA soon to be considered an Olympic swimmer, uh, Mr. David Johnston. All right. That's, that's funny. I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, that's, that's very high praise to be, to be compared to him. And, um, hopefully I can have 1% of the influence he's had. And if that's the case, then, I think I'll be I'll be sad. He's a pretty prominent figure, so I appreciate it. And just also on the shock the world pose, um, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are kind of confused about what that even is, and people are like, "Who is this guy doing this?" But I'm glad we were able to kind of explain some of the backstory behind it. So there you go. Absolutely. For those who want to learn more and know more about the great Mister David Johnston, head on over to his Instagram at David Johnston fourteen. D-A-V-I-D-J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N, and then 14. Uh, You don't have any links. Looking forward to you uh, building and updating more with your Instagram. I know you and I had a chat about that. Uh, Are you, do you TikTok? Are you on Twitter? Are you doing the, uh, well, you don't have the threads yet. Are you planning on doing any of that stuff? Are you just taking it little by little and just building from your Instagram as you're doing your social media? Right. I certainly plan to expand to Twitter and TikTok in the future. But as of now, this is kind of how I'm going to start to build, um, you know, my brand on Instagram. But social media is kind of a new thing to me. I never really um, took it very seriously um, until about a year or so ago or, you know, it's it's still kind of new to me. So, um, you know, just follow me on there and things will continue to expand. So thanks a lot for the shout out. Oh, you're welcome. And who would you like to give a shout out to? Um, I'll give a shout out to my parents for, uh, coming to Japan with me and it's going to be a lot of fun and, you know, putting up with me, taking care of me at home this week. So I'll give them a shout out and I'll shout out my sister. Congrats on her, her wedding. Uh, any closing thoughts, anything you'd like to share with everyone? I think we covered a lot, but I just want to share thank you to anyone who listened in and, um, Steven's the man. So thank you a lot for, for having me on today and, Make sure you tune in and watch Team USA tear it up at Worlds. And I'm just excited to be a part of the team and continue to improve. So thanks a lot for listening. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm checking the messages here. Uh, We've got got Oran Erdahl. He had said, I really love this interview. And uh, thank you, I'm going to say, you know, to you, Oran. And then who else? Sylvia. Loving my Sylvia. Uh, She's out there in Germany. Thank you so much for your love and support. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. Victor, Mr. Victor Ikani. Uh, You can't miss him. Uh, His Instagram is 
uh, V-I-C-T-O-R-T-R-O-Y-I-K-A-N-I. He's this huge, huge um, buff. I'm going to say looks like a, a muscle mania type of fitness guy. Incredible. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Austin. Uh, for your support and for the message. Stella, I'm loving... Uh, Stella, we've known each other for quite a long time uh, through social media. She's out there in Italy. Stella, thank you. Your your support always for the last couple of years. She's, she's always there, David. I love when people don't expect anything. You can feel just... You can just feel it, you know, just through the phone and through messages and stuff of the support with no expectation. It is so very hard to have really great relationships or even good relationships or even fair relationships or decent with people who don't have expectation. And Stella, uh, you're one of those. And I'm sure you you probably can relate to that, uh, David, or going to learn more about that, that there's different levels of, of uh, connection and uh, support in life. Right. Thank you a lot to all of you for listening. And um, that, that's certainly very wise, Stephen. And uh, lastly, Ms. Lovely Lady, uh, Dora Santos. Uh, yeah, thank you. And yes, I did see your recent Instagram post. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go right, right now and I'm going to comment on it. Um, uh, you are a real lovely woman there you go that's Dora. awesome <laughs> yep awesome all right well uh just hold the line real quick david um and thank you for being with us today will do thank you a lot y'all have a great one thank you for tuning in live on air with stephen cuoco on power 98.5 satellite radio uh, check the schedule. I believe that uh, Alicia's got a new show out this uh, Saturday, 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, no, yeah, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I believe it's a music artist, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't get my notes on that one before I came on because I know that she just uh, uh, she sent us the details for that. So, yeah, definitely check out the schedule, whether it be on a... Uh, iOS or Android app or on power985.com. All upcoming shows and uh, shows that we just had that are going to re-air, just like this one with David Johnston. Uh, definitely continue to check the schedule. Uh, we will re-air this episode. If you don't feel like waiting or whether you came in during the middle or the end of the show or you want to share it with your friends and family, it will be uploaded uh, today. Uh, to Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all any one of your favorite podcast channels, it's going to be on there. If you'd like to stay here with us on Power 98.5 and to support us and to, you know, to be very interactive as well, once again, we've got that messenger, we've got those, the, the conversations that are happening here. So click the bottom icon on the right hand corner. Once again, whether you're on the app or on the uh, website, and send us anything you want. Also, I'm very, very excited. And please don't abuse this opportunity. <laughs> please don't abuse it. Because uh, this is for the listeners. This is for uh, also for the guests. You know, if you want to contact, uh, you know, here, Power 98.5. Very, very grateful to say we finally got everything implemented, all of our security measures, everything uh, in order. Uh, go ahead and call the studio, 646-969-3365. Once again, 646-969-3365. We had a number before. And it got a bit out of control. And then you all know it then went into spam and everything. And then I'm like, all right, we're not going to be taking any calls. Um, we we need to do something with this. I mean, the, the calls that we got over warranties. Like if I'm going to get an extended warranty, I'm going to go through my dealership. But I'm very grateful. My vehicles are paid off. You know, everything is in order. But... The number one was always the spam calls of vehicle warranties. What else was there? That just was an absolute nuisance. Um, 
What? Yeah. I, I, it was the warranties. Um, it was something. Once in a while, I, and I didn't mind this, but once in a while, we had like a, a police officer that would call from some organization wanting to know if we would support support it. But uh, he seemed really sad, and I actually had a nice conversation with him one day because it seemed like he was just in robot mode. And I'm like, this guy needs a break, a distraction or something. So I, I just treated the call differently. But uh, yeah, so um, uh, with that, I'm, I'm just happy that we've got better security, more security and more to where if anybody does anything foolish or tries to abuse this number, I am not getting rid of this number, but I will have to say is, um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do it because we. I, I'll put you on blast. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not going to go down like that. Um, you know, we don't want to go through the hassle again. And and this is all connected too. So, uh, you know, whether you're texting us or messaging us, uh, you can send a text message to that phone number or through that phone number. That is our real, real number, not a Google voice, nothing. This is, you know, the station's official number. And, um, I'm excited to see uh, where this is going to go and with the love and support from the listeners and fans and everyone else. And then also looking forward to now, uh, we have something designated and implemented that we can take live calls and you can ask any one of my guests uh, any questions. Uh, we're only leaving this to where if if we have any listeners do call-ins to for any of our live guests, it's just going to be with my show, uh, not with um, Alicia, with um, Resilient You, with Alicia Pazzoni, not with Torelia, with Let Me Tell You, with Lady T. And Catherine is coming back with Catherine and company very soon. It's only with mine. So uh, uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, all great things, Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Remember, head on over to the website. We've got UFC. Uh, definitely, I'm uh, attending Power Slap 3 tonight. Uh, that's going to be free, live on Rumble. Then we have UFC 290, the big card over at T-Mobile. That is on... Uh, I believe that's on ESPN plus, but just check your local listings for the ESPN um, or the UFC. I mean, 290 card. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. So thanks again, everyone for tuning in. Appreciate you. And then if you'd like to send us an email, you can go ahead and email us at contact at power 985.com or power 98.5 radio at gmail.com. Have a great day, everyone. Your socials and let's connect.